Hello pilots and welcome back. Today I want to walk you through the startup procedure of the Lockheed Vega. And uh, we're parked here in Aqua Dulce, that is in Southern California. Uh, beautiful scenery by Warp X. Um, unfortunately, uh, my computer it doesn't have the required specification, so um, uh, you must excuse the, uh, the scenery is not as dense as I'd like it to be. Um, but I'd rather trade good looks for a better frame rate. So let's jump into the cockpit and we go through um, the startup procedure here and the weight and balance sheet on the right side. Um, so we are already fully loaded. We've got four passengers aboard, about 40 kilograms of cargo, both fuel tanks, about half full, 59%, 53%. So um, that should give us around 45, 50-ish gallons of fuel. We have uh, all ground equipment is currently installed and um, Let's get her ready just by detaching everything. One thing that you want to make sure is uh, to get rid of the uh, cover uh, of the pitot tube and this static port, because otherwise your barometric instruments won't show what you want to see. And so the ground crew is now slowly removing um, item after item. There goes the baggage cart. Let's close the doors. P2 cover is gone. And lastly, getting rid of the wheel chocks. Okay, so uh, let's run through the checklists. Um, and yes, checklists uh, are were not even a thing back in the 1920s. Uh, essentially, the, the first real checklist only came about a couple of years later in, in Second World War. Um, nevertheless, uh, we do provide a checklist for the Vega simply because it makes life so much easier. So let's go through the before starting checklist. Pilot's pre-flight briefing is completed. The doors are closed, cabin is secured. Parking brake is set. Let's check that. Uh, so down here you find the parking brake lever. It's this one. And when it's in the back position, you can see that the parking brake is engaged. Electrical fuses. Now, I would recommend that you check these before the flight because you never know if you have a burned fuse. So open up. Uh, the fuse box, open the lid. Yep, that looks all right. We've got spares as well. Close it up again. Next item on the list, clock, wind up and set. So we've got an eight day clock. Um, eight day clock means that with a fully uh, wound spring, the clock will be showing your time for about eight days before it stops working. So um, whenever you, uh, you prepare the Vega for a flight, it is recommended that you wind it up again and set it to the correct time. Uh, it's currently 7.30. That's uh, if you click with the right mouse button and click and drag, you can set the time. Next item, fuel quantity check. The left side of the instrument panel, you'll see the two uh, fuel quantity gauges. And um, they're hydrostatic. Uh, they work by pulling out the plunger and releasing them. And you see indicated is something about, zoom in a little bit. So it shows around 32-ish gallons uh, in both tanks. And uh, you must keep in mind, uh, because we have a tail uh, dragger, when the aircraft is on the ground, it's clearly not level. And so the fuel gauge indication will be off, um, depending on the angle at which your aircraft is. So you get the most precise uh, um, reading of your fuel gauges when you are flying level in the air. On the ground, it's more, it's, it's just to check that the gauge is actually working. It's to check that, um, that yeah, the, the fuel that you put in the tank is actually there, but uh, it won't give you a, a proper correct readout of the, uh, the, the real quantity of fuel. Next item, throttle closed. Let's check the throttle quadrant. Throttle is closed. Mixture uh, is 
full lean. Um, and one thing that you will notice here is that um, the, the mixture is opposite to what you're probably used to. So a full lean is um, the fully forward position in this case. Let's make sure that the uh, spark is fully advanced. So um, this engine is equipped with a spark advanced, uh, so that essentially sets the timing uh, where the fuel gets, or the fuel mixture gets ignited inside your cylinders. And um, the engines, the early engines of the 1920s still had a spark advance before all of it was mechanically automated. So, um, at the moment, um, the spark advance is not simulated yet, so it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really matter where it sits uh, during release, but um, for proper procedure, set the spark advance to f uh, fully forward, fully advance. Next item on the list is the supercharger blower that should be in the off position um, because the, uh, the supercharger takes up a little bit of momentum of the starter motor. And so in order to decrease the load on the electric motor, uh, it is recommended to, to turn off the blower during startup procedure. So that's this lever here, has two settings on and off. So that should be in the off position. Carburetor heat cold. Carburetor heat you'll find just above the two fuel gauges and uh, pushed in is uh, cold. Ignition off. Yeah, you can see the magneto switch is in the off position. Uh, I also, this is not part of the checklist, but I would also recommend that you cage the artificial horizon during startup. Uh, that is just to save on your on the bearings of the uh, of the gyros. And that concludes the before starting checklist. So now let's perform the engine start. First item on the list, master battery switch. Let's click to it. On the right side of the cockpit wall, you find all the electrical installation. So we already saw the fuse box. Uh, right of this is the master battery switch. So this needs to be in the on position. And um, just so you're aware, in the normal uh, default view of the virtual cockpit, the switch is a little bit hidden behind this beam here. So uh, you can operate it, but um, yeah, the, the label is not readable. Just so that you know, it's right there, battery switch. Fuel pressure warning light should come on. Those are uh, fuel pressure warning light and oil pressure warning light. And as soon as you turn the battery on, those should come on because we don't have any fuel pressure, we don't have any oil pressure. And you can actually dim these lights and increase the um, luminosity as well by twisting twisting those. Number four, mixture, full rich. So we pull the lever all the way back and do this on the joystick controls. Wobble pump, operate until fuel pressure reaches two to three PSI. Now the wobble pump is on the right side of the cockpit wall. You can see it right here. And um, it's just the view so that we can see the um, uh, both the fuel warning light. Here's the indicator for the uh, fuel pressure and the wobble pump. You operate it with the uh, left mouse button click and then drag and um, drag it uh, over the screen uh, from the bottom to the top. So pull it back and forward. And it doesn't work. It stops working. Why would that be? Well, our fuel supply is still cut off. So we need to put the fuel selector either to fullest tank or both. This is the both position. Let's try this again. Yeah, there you go. And you can already see how the fuel pressure is rising and reaching about two to three PSI, the warning light should go off. There it is. Let's give it a bit more because we need a bit more time. Oh, it gets harder to push. All right. Primer. You need to prime the engine so that injects a small amount of fuel almost directly into the cylinders. Um, that's required during startup just to make it a little bit more easy for the engine to fire up. And the primer you'll find right here. Um, the primer has a lock. So in order to unlock, you first left click. That unscrews the primer. 
Then you can pull it back. That fills up this little cylinder and then you can push it to squirt the fuel into the cylinder. It's a warm day, so two, I'll give it three strokes, it should be enough. And you can lock the primer again with the right mouse button click. That puts it in place. Throttle, open half an inch. And that should give us roughly 600 RPM during startup. And uh, what you see here, this wobbling, uh, that is just a result of a very old joystick that I'm using. It's a Cytec X52. And yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's seen some actions. Ignition. Magnetos, both on. One, two, three. That's both. Booster button and starter button on. So in the original aircraft, um, you would press both the booster button and the um, starter button at the same time. Uh, so one finger would be on one button, the other finger on the other button, and then you would just pu push them in. Obviously, in flight sim, we can't really do that. And um, so um, the workaround of that is that uh, when you press the button, it stays in the press position and then you can operate the other one. But one thing that you would have noticed is that the fuel pressure by the time that we set everything up dropped again to zero. So we should bring that up again. Okay, there we are. So booster button on. And nothing happens. My suspicion is, yep, that's right. We overloaded the battery. We've got a blown fuse for the starter motor. So let's change that again and hope that second time we're more lucky. The reason for this is that um, uh, I would I expect that the voltage of the battery is quite low. And as the voltage drops, the um, the starter motor is sucking up more current. And so as it's sucking up more current, more current goes through the fuse, so it's more likely to blow. Um, one thing that you could do uh, in order to prevent that is to not engage the booster. So let's try that. Now I need more fuel pressure again. Okay. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's have a look at our instruments. RPM, we are currently idling at about 600. Uh, and the checklist reads, after engine ignition, run it at 600 RPM for 10 seconds, release the booster button, then open the throttle to idle it at around 900 to 1000 RPM until the oil temperature reaches 40 degrees Celsius. And um, you saw I didn't really touch the, the throttle, so the engine slowly gets to speed anyway, so we should be idling now at, at uh, yeah, roughly 1,000 RPM. One thing that uh, isn't properly implemented yet is, um, is the oil pressure and oil temperature yet, so you won't really see the rise uh, in the uh, early access version of the aircraft yet. That is to come at a later date. All right, let's continue with the checklist. Oil pressure rising, uh, supercharger blower on. Generator switch on. I told you before that our battery is very low on voltage, so let's turn on the generator. Vacuum selector as required. Um, the vacuum selector is up here, and you can switch between Venturi off and the vacuum pump. Vacuum pump is the, um, the vacuum pump that's uh, directly driven by the engine. Venturi is, uh, if you look on the outside, you can actually see it. It's right here. And essentially the Venturi is enough to power all these, uh, all the vacuum instruments. So in order not to strain the engine, just switch it to Venturi and you will see how uh, vacuum instruments will come to life very, sh very uh, shortly after. Directional gyro spinning up.
Turn and bang indicator is coming to life. Let's see what the artificial horizon does. Uh, still wobbling a bit, but yeah, it's stabilizing. Okay. Um, directional gyro set. So um, we are looking at 170 degrees um, in Southern California. So we got about 12, I think, 12 degrees of deviation, quite a bit. So there we are. And now we're ready to go. So that concludes our startup procedure for the Lockheed Vega. For more information, you can visit our website at www.wing42.com. That's all. Have fun.